Today's project, Magnemite from Pokemon. So this should be quite a simple build. Uh, the majority of it is just going to be a big ball of steel, which I'm going to have to purchase because I don't have a power hammer and I don't have a year's worth of time in which to try and forge a massive, great sort of, you know, 12.5 centimetre ball. Um, what I will do is I'm going to use like a hole saw to cut um, a sort of indent in and then make it nice and shiny. So I'll have a forge finish on the body and on the magnets, but on the centre it's going to be buffed nice and shiny. So that should contrast. The magnets themselves are just going to be made out of a 2 cm um, square bar, which I'm going to bend. And then for either end, I need a blue and a red end. The blue I'm going to try and uh, put a temper on. And as for the red end, I'm going to try and do something with copper that I've never done before. Um, there will be like a big bolt at the top. What I'm going to do is probably try and twist some square bar for that. Or failing that, I'll weld on a thin rod around a, um, a larger pipe. Uh, and the same thing for the two bottom bolts, which I haven't even drawn on. Because I'm lazy, and you will see when I'm done. So, let's get started. Magnets first. Right, we've got those up to beyond critical, and I've turned the forge off, I'm going to leave them in there, and I'm going to let them anneal. Uh, that's probably going to take several hours, because this forge stays hot for ages. Look how cool that looks, though. Mmm. Change of plans. That shape wasn't working, it was too big. So I've cut off both ends, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to have one of these small round, sorry, ground off square parts for one end. I'm going to temper these uh, until they turn blue. Uh, and then for the other end, I need a red colour. Now, I really hate it when people do really good metalwork, and then they ruin it, in my opinion, by giving it a paint job. Just It just seems lazy. So what I'm going to try is using copper, and I want to try doing uh, a red patina on this copper using a borax solution. So I've never done this before, but let's see how that goes. I think what I'm going to do to connect these is I'm going to drill a hole in either end. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, die and thread a bar and use that as a screw and I'm going to screw one onto the other because the trouble with welding is that will ruin the temper colours I want so I have to try and think of a creative solution around this There's the first copper one done. Now we've got to work on the second. There we go, we've finished both the copper ends and we've got the forge lip. What I'm going to do, I'm going to heat these up one by one, just the, uh, the copper ends. And then once that's done, I'm going to dunk it into this borax solution, which granted needs a bit of a stir. Check out that colour. That's the before and that's the after. I think that looks really cool. Right, now I've just got to do the same with this one. I can't get over how cool that looks. I like the uh, two different shades as well. Not deliberate. I wouldn't know how to replicate or avoid that, but for a first time I'm really pleased with how that came out. That looks really cool. Shall definitely be trying to use this again in future. 
So, I finally got done doing the temper on these. Um, it was actually a lot harder than I thought. Let's see how well that came out. Um, I did try initially just doing it with a torch, but the trouble was, unlike the corners and things, these would uh, these would become hot spots, and the actual faces would uh, either go, either wouldn't change, or they turn to the wrong colour. So what I ended up doing was I put them in the oven. Um, the problem then is that my oven only goes up to uh, 300 degrees, and in order to get this blue, you need it about 310. That 10 degrees makes a difference between it sort of being like a purpley brown uh, and an actual blue. So what I then did was I left them in the oven for about two hours in order to get them to like a pale blue. Uh, sorry, like a, a dark brown. And then I used the torch very lightly, just sort of glancing the surface in order to get them to the right shade of blue. So that was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. And it, they did still come out a little bit, little bit patchy in certain areas. But overall, I think it came out okay. And you can definitely see the colour difference when it's, uh, you know, displayed properly. So, overall, I'm pretty pretty happy with how that came out. Magnet's done. Now we've got to work on the body. Which, wait. Is ready to go. <laughs> okay, yeah, so um, this is a 12.5 centimetre solid steel uh, sphere, which is, hang on, very heavy. Let's have a look. <laughs> So, um, yeah, got to get to working on that now. Uh. There we go, there's my guide, now I've lost my centrepiece. So I've got to somehow try and secure this on here so that I can score the circle I need to grind out. Never mind, don't really need this bit. Seems to work fine without it. Worst noise ever. There we go, hand sanded back to a 500 grit finish. Now I've just got to add his uh, pupil. I think I'm just going to drill a hole for that. There you go, hole drilled, and that's kind of what we're looking like so far. Uh, I think I'm going to weld these on next, uh, and then I'll start working on the screws. So let's get to welding. Welded! I uh, would have recorded that, except I forgot. Got. Cool. Got to work on the screws next. Do that tomorrow. Nearly there. One more, I reckon. One screw section. There you go, one screw. Now I've just got to work on the top. So for the top, I've got this nice big bit of uh, two inch EN8 steel, and I'm thinking that should work perfectly for the top of the screw. So I'll cut a, uh, a small thin slice off, I'll probably grind it back rather than forge it, because I'm lazy, uh, and then I just need to weld this on, um, and I think that should come out quite well. And then it'll just be a case of working on the two little side ones.
There we go, one curly whirly mushroom. Um, you might have guessed by this project, but I'm not paying a huge amount of level to detail, which is quite nice. It's a bit of a lazy project. Um, I really like the forge finish, so what I'm going to do is, rather than try and like buff this up and make it perfect, I'm going to um, file in my, my uh, Phillips head cross section on here, uh, and then I'm going to put it back in the forge and give it another forge finish, because I just think it looks so much cooler. Um, but it is nice not having to worry too much about tidying up welds and things like that. I just think it gives the overall appearance much cooler. There we go, top screw all done. Uh, I will now chuck it in the forge and get it up to a forge finish and then we shall weld it onto the top of our Magnemite. Couldn't find my quench tank. There you go, nice forge finish on that. Perfect. Leave that to cool. There you go, somewhere around there. Just need to weld it on now. There we go, top welded on. Right, last two little bolts. Um, I need to find some smaller square bar, I think, in order to do these, but I don't know if I've got any. I'll have a rummage. Noise. I found this piece of 15mm uh, bar. So I'm going to cut off a section of this, and then we'll twist that up and do exactly the same as we did with the top. Uh, I've then just got to find a smaller piece uh, of the 2-inch. I'll probably try and find a 1-inch or something to see if that'll work as the uh, top of the bolt. So, let's cut this bit off here. Just like that. So we'll chuck this in the forge and I'm just going to do exactly the same thing, twist it up. I'm not going to record myself doing that because that was difficult last time, so you know the process. There you go, you can probably see I've done one half. I'm now heating up the back to try and... Uh, oops, hang on. Now heating up the back half so I can do the same with that. Cut up. Now we just need to find some tops for them. There we go, found a 40mm bar stock and that seems to work pretty well. So we'll cut two sections off this and do exactly the same as we did with the uh, the one, the two inch, sorry. Well here's where we're up to. I've got these uh, welded onto the, uh, the plates and uh, ground back on the underside. Obviously now I need to grind back the tops and put the crosses in again. This one seems to be taking a lot longer for some reason, I think because I'm getting tired. There you go both done, both ready to go back in the forge, so that's exactly what we'll do, we'll chuck these back in here, give them the forge finish and then we'll weld them on, and I think that's it, I think we're done. Done. Now, let's do the final weld, this is going to look cool. Tell you what, it might be dumb, but it's heavy. Here you go, here's Magnemite. I'm not gonna lie, ah, God almighty. I'm not gonna lie, he looks really cool. Um, I really like the fact that there's absolutely nothing in this other than metal. Majority is steel, and it's solid steel, and with two tiny little bits of copper, which just came out so cool. Look at this guy, but you know, I think for a um, possibly the start of maybe a bit of a video series, starting off with the first steel type, who was a steel type before there even were steel types, I think that's a pretty good way to go forward. So, like I say, I might make a series out of this, but uh, God, he's heavy. <laughs> anyway, cheers for watching, and uh, I'll let him say goodbye. Check it out. He even floats. <laughs>